Hey, what's up YouTube? Rastov here and welcome back to Rastovs and Dragons. If you ever wanted to be a vampire in your campaign, but it didn't really fit, or have you wanted to be a dark paladin and it didn't really fit, well today I'm bringing you a character concept that I really liked because I struggled with both of these things of wanting to do both of those things. And how did I solve that problem? Well, I created a Dampier Paladin Oathbreaker. Now the reason I did this and the reason I thought it was a good idea is you've still, you've not got the inherently pure evil aspect of being a vampire and you're not entirely good because you used to be a paladin so there's sort of like a lot of internal conflict depending on how you want to build your character, um, what your backstory is and all that sort of stuff. So I'll leave you to decide that for yourself because I don't want to tell you how to play your character because that's not what it should be about should take an idea if you can't think of one yourself and mold it into your own perfect idea and that's going to make the game a lot more enjoyable so i'm going to give you a quick rundown of just a really basic shell of a character up to about level four and then hopefully that should give you the tools to kind of get uh, this idea started if you do want to work it in with your campaign and if you are having trouble talking to your dm about how to integrate either one of these ideas this can be a really great way to do it so i'm going to click on over to D&D Beyond and I'm going to show you what I put together. All right, so as you can see, I've got Boob Run. <laughs> the damn bit. Look, to be honest, some of these suggestions that pop up are really random. Literally, Boob Run was in the suggestion and I was just like, well, I can't not click that. It's got boob in it. Anyway, <laughs> we're starting off with Boob Run. Obviously, step one, pick the Dampier race. It's really cool. I love Dampier. I love vampires. Not, not Twilight vampires, mind you. Like, you're stock, you, you know, you, you're, you're OG, really cool vampires, you know? Like, yeah, <laughs> you get it. If you're watching this, it's because you get it. Oh, the, the cool things about Dampiers and D&D, these three things. Right? Don't need to breathe. Spider climb. Wall walking. Ceiling standing. Ceiling standing. A lot of debate online, actually, about how that works with uh, vampires walking up and standing on ceilings whether or not they create their own center of gravity so that's something you probably want to talk to your dm about as well trying to figure out whether or not it would work because if you want to play a dampier and you want to do the walking across vertical surfaces upside down and along ceilings and your dm's like well your gear's gonna fall off this might not be the character for you because one of the coolest parts about it is going to be just taken away from you so if your DM's cool with it, this can be a really cool idea, but as a paladin, more than likely going to be wearing heavy armor. Um, but definitely something to communicate with your DM about. Vampiric Bite. It's pretty self-explanatory. A lot of uh, paladins utilize constitution as a stat because it's HP, and a lot of the time a paladin could be a, a tank. But again, it'll depend how you play your character. Got the character up to level 4. Um, I'm using just fixed HP for this, just because really basic proficiencies, persuasion, intimidation, you pick what you want, that's fine. Uh, the fighting style, I went with dueling, just because, you know, sword and board, that's how I like to play. But again, you could pick any of these and you'd be in, in a fine position. It all just depends on what you want to do. And that's what I think is the most important thing about these builds, is that I'm not telling you what your character should be, everything you should take from 1 to 20. I'll give you a brief little shell, little idea concept behind it. You roll with it, make it your baby. And enjoy, because that's what it's all about. The Sacred Oath, Oathbreaker. It's really self-explanatory when you get down to the spells. You get Hellish Rebuke, Inflict Wounds, um, and then your Channel Divinities control undead i mean that's just thematic right vampire controlling undead creatures dreadful aspect same thing so it all fits in with the theme really nicely i feel like it doesn't really conflict a lot uh you know if you do make it to ninth level spells or ninth level you get animate dead bestow curse all of these there's some really good stuff in here um the reason i took it to for uh four obviously you've got feet there i took fey touched gets you that extra charisma point and then misty step now i do know a lot of people take misty step just because it's kind of op oh well i mean i think it is op but i think in this in this sort of scenario it's actually a really cool thematic ability that you can use 
uh, especially like you know vampire misty stepping up onto the ceiling uh, that, that in my head that's just awesome uh, but again you'll need to talk to your, <laughs> your TM about whether or not they'll be cool with that so but I think it should work uh, again you just pick what you want from these spells dissonant whispers kind of kind of fits with the theme uh, you know you just whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice can hear so I mean it fits with the theme stats uh, I've gone with the standard array uh, I typically don't um, I, I roll my stats so this isn't what mine would normally look like because it would depend on what I rolled but if I was going to use the standard array you know you'd want to put most of your points into charisma strength constitution and then just wherever you don't really need dexterity um, which is different for a vampire because typically you think of them as quite agile but yeah. I mean again you can play it however you want you make your stats whatever you want uh, finding backgrounds I thought was quite difficult to be honest until I found this one the faceless background it, it's a kind of juxtaposition between like a person being someone else so there's that whole mask of like if you want to keep it thematic you're the paladin who's now the dark paladin you know you used to be a holy warrior now you're an oath breaker so it kind of kind of melds in well but if you've got one that fits better for you in your campaign go with that um, and then I'll, this is kind of what it looks like in the actual character sheet uh, this has honestly been one of my most fun characters to play um, just just smites and all that good stuff yeah so that's Boobrun, <laughs> the Dampier Oathbreaker Paladin. I hope you've enjoyed today's character concept. If you have any ideas or anything you want to see if I can create, let me know, because I might be able to put something together. Uh, but tell me in the comments as well if there's anything you would change, anything you would do differently, something you think works better than a Dampier Paladin Oathbreaker to try and fit this little theme. Um, or, actually, I'm not much of an artiste. So if you could if you if you could do up some art and show me what that looks like that would be amazing. But uh thank you so much for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one and have a great day. Peace.